Hello, I'm Jacoby Defense, and I'm making a series on my favorite games for every Nintendo console. This is about the one that started it all, the Nintendo Entertainment System, the 8-bit classic that saved video games from a crash in 1983-85. to Please note that this video is purely my opinion, and if you disagree with my picks, that's totally fine. Let me know what your favorite NES games are in the comments. But now, let's -a go. Number 5. My pick for number 5 is Super Mario Bros. 2, but not the SMB2 that you remember. I'm talking about a game that was only released in Japan at first, because it was deemed too hard for the Western part. Western market. That's right, I actually like Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. This game is very similar to the original Super Mario Bros, except the entire game is basically a Kaizo slash troll ROM hack. Let's take a look at the first and famous level to see what I mean. At first, this level seems kinda like 1-1 in the original, just harder. Anyone who had played SMB1 would first hit these question blocks. However, this question mark block spawns a mushroom that kills you. And yes, Nintendo made this game. Hard to believe, right? And the whole game is like that. There's wind levels that put you around, levels that require you to find an invisible block in a random spot, or pipes that take you back to previous worlds, etc. So why again did I put this game at number 5? Well, I actually kind of like this style of game. Being a well-experienced troll creator in Super Mario Maker, I kind of appreciate this. Now yes, a lot of this game is needless frustration, but it just kind of makes you laugh and move on to the next step. Besides, there isn't really much competition for me since these are all 8-bit games. Number 4 Now, I'm not huge on RPGs. I like some, but they aren't the focus of my channel. However, there's one NES RPG that really all other games take elements from. And that is none other than Final Fantasy. This is the turn-based RPG that really defined what this genre is. This game has somewhat of an actual story, which is odd for NES games. Upgradable equipment, basically everything that you would find in any other JRPG. The thing that is so amazing about this game in particular is that they managed to cram this onto an NES cartridge. This game is only 144 kilobytes. You'll go through towns, talking to people, fight enemies, bosses, learn about the story, and get stronger and stronger. However, while you are playing the game, you're constantly reminded that this is a 144 kilobyte NES game. You can see that many NPCs have reused dialogue. You have a limit to how many character your names can be. All of the NPCs just walk in place. If this was an N64 or a GBA game, that this might be one of the best games ever made. Number 3 This game is about exploration, crawling your way through Hyrule or dungeons, and it needs no introduction. From the sword in the cave to the Triforce in Link's hand, this game preserves Miyamoto's childhood dream of exploring the unknown. The music for this game is really good. It might be some of the best 8-bit music ever. Hyrule Field, the dungeon music, all the sound effects, it's just great. Although I do wish there was a little more variety. The combat in this game is different from all the other Zelda games in that it relies on the fact that Link can only really swing his sword in 4 directions, instead of 8 like the other 2D games, and 360 like 3D games. Every enemy in this game is out to get you and you have to fight back hard. Expect to die many times, as this is no easy game. Just like Final Fantasy though, this game suffers from being 8-bit. The characters all have short dialogue and terrible grammar. Also, nearly the entire story comes from the manual rather than the game itself. This game was also one of the first games that had the option to save. This means that unlike SMB and SMB2J, you don't have to play the whole game from start to finish in one go to avoid losing progress. However, in my opinion, when compared to A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Minish Cap, and A Link Between Worlds, 
this game just seems like it's missing things that the later 2D games had. Number two. This was the game that single-handedly saved video games and started one of the most successful franchises in video game history. But more than that, this game actually holds up compared to its successors unlike many others on this list. Let me give you an example to show you what I mean. If I finished, say, New Super Mario Bros. U, and then I go and play Super Mario Bros., I feel like I didn't transition into anything, but I'm playing basically the same game on older hardware. But if I just finished playing, say, A Link to the Past, and though I want to play the original Zelda by comparison, I have to relearn about five-eighths of the game. This game has the same basic grid-like structure, the same enemies for the most part, the same power-ups for the most part, the same controls as all the other 2D Mario games. So it just feels like another one of those, and it's good. Also, this game has a second quest, but it's basically just the same thing, except all the Goombas are replaced with Buzzy Beetles. So much harder, wow. This is one of the few NES games that still holds up today, and that's why I have it at number two. Whenever I replay Super Mario Bros. 3 on a Wii U Virtual Console, I tend to forget that this game wasn't released on the Super Nintendo, but is still an NES title. The game would be quite impressive in my opinion, even if it were an early Super Nintendo game, but that Super Mario Bros. 3 was still released on the NES always blows my mind. Number 1 I totally agree with this. This game almost doesn't even feel 8-bit. The music is so clear, the physics are so much more advanced than in the first game in Lost Levels. There's a new power-up, the game is just so impressive. And somehow this is an NES-wise, this is almost the same as the first two games. But there's more variety of power-ups and enemies, better colors, and so many more secrets, many more levels. There's just so much more. Of course, this game is much harder than the original, and I had to use several save states and warp whistles just to show you footage of World 8. However, this is the best holding up NES game, and that's why it's at number one. Thank you for watching this video. Did you agree with me? Do you hate me for putting Lost Levels but not Doki Doki Panic or Zelda 2? Leave a like if you liked the video, and if you didn't, then dislike it and leave a comment telling me why. And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more Nintendo content.